Alright, this is the third and final video in our PCA series. In the first video, we talked about the notion of change of basis. And in the second video, we talked about the notion of projection and variance. And we talked about the concept of the first principal component that the PCA algorithm computes as being the vector that maximizes the variance of our data projected onto it. So we've introduced PCA as an optimization problem. And in this video, we're going to see that we can solve the optimization problem analytically. So let's start with our expression for the first principal component. The first thing we're doing is we're calculating the projection onto a vector v for every item in the data. This is going to be a list of numbers, which we are going to represent as a column vector. In the second video, we saw that the projection of vector a on vector b is computed as a transpose b over b transpose b. In our case, we're projecting vector di onto vector v, so we're going to compute v transpose di over v transpose v. Now, by stipulation, v transpose v is going to be equal to 1, so we can remove that, and we're left with the following column vector. This column vector can be written in matrix notation as d transpose v. So we're going to return to our original expression for the first principal component, and we're going to rewrite it as finding the vector v that maximizes the variance of d transpose v. Now in the second video we saw that the variance of a vector in mean deviation form is equivalent to the inner product of the vector with itself. Thus, if we preprocess d transpose v by subtracting off the mean from every element, we can write the variance of d transpose v as d transpose v transpose d transpose v. So by using the identities that we established in the second video, we have algebraically manipulated the optimization problem of finding the first principal component into the following form, maximize the expression v transpose dd transpose v. The claim now is that this optimization problem is analytically computable. So v transpose dd transpose v is known as a quadratic form because the matrix dd transpose is symmetric, meaning it is equivalent to its transpose. A symmetric matrix also has the property that it is square, and it is symmetric across its diagonal. Quadratic forms are easy to optimize analytically. Let's first look at the special case where the matrix A is not only symmetric, but it's diagonal, meaning off-diagonal elements are zero. Let's look at the two-dimensional case. So if we write the quadratic form in vector notation in two dimensions, we get the following form, and we can further reduce this down to an expression with no vectors and no matrices, the expression ax1 squared plus bx2 squared can be upper bounded by the argument that it will always be less than ax1 squared plus ax2 squared, assuming a is greater than b. We can then factor out the a, and because the length of x is 1, we find that ax1 squared plus bx2 squared must always be less than a. In fact, the expression can achieve the value a at the vector x10. Thus, when we have a quadratic form, and the matrix is diagonal, the largest value that the quadratic form will achieve is the largest diagonal value of A. And the vector x that will achieve that value corresponds to the unit vector that selects the appropriate column from A. Now in general, DD transpose will not be a diagonal matrix. DD transpose is also known as the covariance matrix, and in general for a data set, features will have covariance. Thus we must look at the more general case of optimizing the quadratic form when A is not diagonal. To do this, we can use the following theorem about symmetric matrices, which we will not prove. For every symmetric matrix A, there's a matrix E and a matrix V, such that A is equivalent to EV, E transpose. Furthermore, E transpose equals E inverse, and V is a diagonal matrix. If we allow these propositions, we can directly substitute E V E transpose for A in the quadratic form. We can see that we still retain a quadratic form. E transpose X is a column vector, and its transpose, E transpose E, is a row vector. We now are trying to maximize a quadratic form with a diagonal matrix V, and we saw in that case that the form is maximized at the largest diagonal value of V, if we assume that the largest diagonal value of v occurs in the first column, then our quadratic form is going to be maximized at e transpose x equals 1, 0, 0, 0, which is equivalent to the first column of e. The matrix e 
is composed of the eigenvectors of A and the matrix V is composed of the eigenvalues of A arranged along the diagonal. The upshot of this theory is that the principal component problem, which is the problem of maximizing a quadratic form with a symmetric but not necessarily diagonal matrix DD transpose, can be solved by calculating V, the eigenvalues of DD transpose, and E, the eigenvectors of DD transpose. The first principal component, meaning the vector V that maximizes the expression, will be the first eigenvector of DD transpose corresponding to the largest eigenvalue of DD transpose. The remaining principal components are the remaining eigenvectors of DD transpose, and they have the interpretation that they maximize the projection of the data onto them with the further constraint that they are orthogonal to all previous principal components. Ultimately, principal components analysis is a heuristic approach to analyzing data. It may or may not be useful to re-represent data as linear combinations of orthogonal vectors along which the variance of the projected data is maximized. Specifically, projection ignores nonlinear dependencies in the data. Thus, the ultimate utility of PCA depends on the specific nature of the data set and the desired outcomes of the analysis. However, many state-of-the-art algorithms can be viewed as generalizations of PCA, therefore making conceptual understanding of PCA very useful for creating and understanding more advanced data analysis algorithms.